My name is Patrick Cosgrove, and I'm the uh, Student Recruitment Officer at Mary Immaculate College. And this evening, I'm going to be in conversation with Professor Michael Breen, who's the Dean of the Faculty of, uh, Faculty of Arts uh, at the College. So thanks again, Michael, for, for taking the time out to talk to us this evening. I suppose, for, first of all, maybe just for people who might not be too familiar with the Bachelor of Arts degree in the College, would you just maybe give a general overview of the, of the programme and maybe the subjects that are available to students? Sure. Uh, the Bachelor of Arts degree in Mary I is a four-year programme. Uh, three years are spent on campus, one year off campus. I'll talk more about that in a moment. There are 13 subjects in the degree, if I can remember them all. They are Irish, English, French, German, Maths, Media, Music, Psychology, History, Geography, Philosophy, Theology and Drama and Theatre Studies. Okay. Uh, uh, and students have an absolutely free choice in first year. We don't ask them to make any decision before they come to the college. They have an opportunity to try the different subjects, see what they want to do. And they pick four subjects in their first year. We add uh, the smart skills, study skills to that uh, as a fifth subject. And then in the second year, they go ahead with two subjects of the four. And they're the two subjects they will take to degree level. And they'll also write their undergraduate dissertation uh, in one of those two subjects. In addition, uh, we have this third year, uh, which is spent off campus, either study abroad or in professional work placement. And that's sort of uh, mostly career oriented. And we work with the students to find out what will work for them. Uh, I have a, a personal preference that every student would study abroad, if at all possible, uh, for at least one semester. That's not always possible. Okay. Language students must study abroad if they want to be accredited for teaching afterwards they must semester in the country where that foreign language is spoken perfect perfect so that'd be french german mainly michael french, german. we also offer spanish uh through the university of limerick it's taught in our program uh, so that's a possibility as well okay um I suppose, yeah, that's a very good overview, I suppose, of the programme, Michael. Um, I suppose the college, and particularly the Bachelor of Arts degree, a huge amount of effort has been put in in recent times into helping students um, make that transition from secondary school to third level. So, for example, on the arts degree in first year, uh, uh, the students do a foundation course in um, the skills for study and work. And there's also other initiatives in first year to help them make transition. Uh, would you just like to expand a little bit more on that? The whole function of the Foundation Skills Programme, Smart Skills, is to equip students to make that transition from uh, the world usually of school to the world mm -hmm. of university. And probably the easiest way to say it is that the school examines you basically on what kind of facts you can produce in any subject of interest. In the university, we're much more interested in your understanding that you can understand and explain and we have particular uh, efforts made to help students make that transition to writing in a particular style, to being able to use uh, research resources in the library, the various the books, okay. journals, draw and lecture notes, how to manage their, uh, their thought process in a way that's going to allow them put something articulate down on paper, to marshal an argument, essentially, uh, a persuasive argument about a particular point of view. No matter what the subject is, that's, that's true. And that's a skill that is highly sought after by employers afterwards. People who can write well, uh, marshal yeah. and put stuff together concisely. It's a very valuable exercise. Okay, yeah, the, the, I suppose there are great skills to, uh, that you can pick up as part of, of your Bachelor of Arts degree. Uh, I suppose that follows on then maybe in second year where students have the option of uh, elective that they can choose from so they can almost afford, broaden their, their skill base. So would you like to talk about the different electives that are available to students uh, in second year of, of the programme? Sure. Um, every student is going to take their two subjects in the second year. There might be sort of history and geography, or it could be Irish and maths, whatever it is. In addition to that, the student gets to pick one subject of their own choosing uh, from a range of, of possibilities. Now, they could choose any of the other subjects. If students studying history and geography might decide to do an elective in music or might decide to do an elective in theology or whatever it is. But more particularly, we have special electives that are in there. And they're usually in pairs. There's one in each semester. So one is on education. There is an introduction to the Irish education system and to uh, pedagogy. 
which is really geared towards those students who want to go on after their degree and become teachers. Uh, Mary Guy has a fantastic reputation uh, in terms of, of producing teachers. We produce about 40% of the um, primary school teachers in the country. Uh, we also have uh, our teaching programs in Thurlis for secondary school. But a lot of the students who come to the BA, uh, the liberal arts degree, are going to go on and teach afterwards. So these two modules are particularly geared towards helping them have a look at that, kind of suck it and see, and, and prepare for that particular uh, uh, career, if that's what they wish. We also have uh, a pair of uh, electives in there on TEFL, T-E-F-L, Teaching mm. English Foreign Language. This is probably one of our most popular um, electives. It's recognized by the three world bodies that, that uh, certify teachers of English as a foreign language. So essentially, this is something uh, with, uh, in your back pocket that you can travel the world and make a living at. And yeah. a few years ago, I had a lovely letter from a, a mature student who had come to us. Um, I remember him vividly because he used to go around in his bike or jacket with his helmet on. Uh, yeah. Wrote to me uh, to say he was now living the dream after he graduated. He was in China on top of a mountain, teaching English as a foreign language. So it wasn't his degree he was using as such, it was an ethical program. Um, we also have a pair of modules in there on entrepreneurship. We have modules on IT uh, and on gender studies. Um, I think what else is in there? there I think that's mostly it, yeah. There, yeah. There. So yeah, they give they cover them all, yeah. Um, yes, as we said, they're, they're brilliant options, Michael. As I said, anyone in teaching with education, the education module, TEFL, as I said, as I said is a brilliant qualification to have if you want to travel maybe in the future. So I suppose there's great options and great, I suppose, skills that you can pick up as part of your um, Bachelor of Arts degree. Um, I suppose then moving on to third year of the programme then, it's the, uh, it's the our campus placement and there's also the option to, uh, to study abroad as well. Um, would you like to take us through maybe how, how third year works on, on the degree, uh, Michael? I will. I mean, students can, can mix and match here. They can take two terms abroad. They okay. can take two terms of work placement. They can be in different work placements or they can they can one of each. So for the students who are interested in education as a career afterwards, they can get a work placement in a school, helping out in a school, either primary school or secondary school. And okay. that can really serve as confirmation of a student's choice because we get students that I'm going to be a primary teacher and I'm going to do my workplace and they come yeah. in, never again am I going to say <laughs> the class. And you get the opposite as well. And then we have work, placement, uh, work placements all over the place in, in media, in different kinds of offices, uh, different mm. institutions, where students can taste the working life. Mm. In terms of study abroad, we have placements basically all over Europe, uh, the United States. Uh, mm. We have them now in China, Korea, and we're moving out into that part of the world. Uh, and the opportunities there for our students to study at an, another university. There's no fees to pay because it's an exchange program. They will have to cover their accommodation costs. Um, but they'd have cover accommodation costs anyway. And they experience a whole new culture, a different set of modules. They can take whatever modules they want. Uh, we'd like them to take one or two related to their core subjects, but they can actually take uh, a free list of modules there. And it's a fantastic experience for students to go away to a foreign country. Uh, they're living independently. They're literally away from home uh, mm -hmm. in, in a very different way. And that brings its own challenges and its own rewards. Uh, but it's it's a remarkably rich experience uh, and one that our, our students uh, benefit greatly from. Equally, uh, because it's an exchange program, in our uh, courses at Mary I all the time, we have a whole plethora of foreign students. Um, so I think we've about 40 in the BA at the moment who are from these who come for one semester or two uh, and stay there. And we also have a stream of students who particularly come from the United States uh, study in Mary I. I think we've about 10 or so at the moment in first year. Yeah. yeah, brilliant. Yeah, that's like, I suppose it gives that year and third year, I suppose it gives great options to students that not only allows them to develop personally, but that option to go abroad for a semester as well as maybe do a semester work experience. And like you said, if you're interested in teaching, it might be the moment when you could figure out if it was the career for you, as well as getting, I suppose, practical experience on your CV as well. That's, um, that's true. But also, it serves a very good purpose when you go for a job interview. Yeah, and yeah. What did you do during your time in college? Well, do you know, I, I went and I studied in, uh, in New York or wherever it was. Yeah. Had that kind of 
independence of spirit and get up and go and a bit of gumption about you that you didn't take the soft option. You went yeah. and you took something that was not necessarily easy. And that's a, a real sign to an employer about your employability and your usefulness to them. Yeah, yeah, and it does. It definitely would make your CV stand out. I think anyway, in the future, when you were looking for 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 jobs and employment, I suppose that brings us on to fourth year. Then we we are back on campus. You're back back in college. Um, so one of the main things in your final year is the undergraduate dissertation, um, and I suppose it's it's kind of an opportunity to do kind of uh, a unique uh, piece of writing, really, Michael, isn't it? It is. Um, and research as well. Here. In a sense, uh, I say the gloves are off. Uh, you're, you're facing the finishing line. Uh, you've got subjects under your belt. You have a lot of work done, and you want to get there. So in addition to your your two uh, subjects for, for your degree, you're writing an undergraduate dissertation, which is a fairly lengthy piece of work. Uh, and uh, it's, it's double wages. It accounts for extra credit as well. The work for that actually starts in second year when you pick your subject. And uh, I often say to the students who come to me to supervise them for a, an undergraduate dissertation that I only do it if they accept I'm going to hold their feet to the fire because we expect them to produce quality work. And this is a capstone piece of work that uh, really draws together a lot of the skills you've learned and distills them down to your ability to produce academic work of the highest quality. And that's also a real good indicator to uh, uh, an employer of your ability to write, your ability to undertake, undertake independent research, uh, your ability to be a self-starter, your ability to be uh, autonomous. Also, by the time the student gets to fourth year in Mary I, uh, in fact, by the time they get to second year, we will know every student by name, and they yeah. will know us. And them knowing us isn't a problem now, but us knowing them is a real problem for them. Uh, yeah. is that we will literally know them by name. And if you're not there, you'll be missed because of the, the way we look after our students, both in small groups and the kind of care that we have as a community for our students. We have um, a 94% retention rate uh, yeah. in college. It's the highest in the country. In other words, if the students start out in Mary I, we lose fewer than any other third level institution in Ireland. And that's a fantastic claim to fame. And the reason uh, I think that we, that happens is not just the quality of our program, but it's the care of our staff. We care about every student that comes through the door. And I think yeah. that shows, shows in our reputation. And um, one thing that I, I, I know is that students who disappeared out of the program tend to be because they made the wrong choice. They came and they should have been in engineering or they should have been in science or they don't want to do the kind of reading that's involved. Uh, it's, it's, it's not that they are necessarily unhappy with the college at all. Yeah. No, that, that's a great point, uh, Michael. And as I say, I suppose, you're not really, you're not just a number. You're you're you have a name. You're a person. Really, it exposes the whole kind of uh, thing behind it. Really, in Mary Immaculate. There's one um, one story I've often told about uh, a student who transferred into another from another college to us. He had health problems, so he gave up and he arrived into us. And about three weeks in the place, there's a bang on my door, and he bounced into the room. Yeah. Uh, I said, "What's wrong?" He said, "Nothing, nothing, nothing. It's great." I said, "What's great? Everything." I said, "What do you mean?" He said, "Every office I go into." They never ever asked my number. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that was an extraordinary experience compared yeah. to being in a much, much bigger institution elsewhere in the country. Because there he had been a number. He had been one mm -hmm. of a list of thousands. In Mary I we don't be known. Now that has that has disadvantages as well, that we're a small college. But it has enormous advantages. And I yeah. think advantages far outweigh the disadvantages. Yeah, I think you're very right. I think that's really kind of one of the key um, uh, key um, advantages of the whole uh, of Marymount College and the course, just that kind of personal experience that, that students get. I suppose for many students who are maybe watching us this evening, first, first, a lot of things that come to mind is uh, particularly assessment. So would you like to just generally run through how students are assessed on the course, Michael? We use essentially, well, there, there are three kinds of assessment that we use, depending on the program that, that a student is, is undertaking. We do in-course assignments where, for example, it could be 20%, 40%, or 100% of the grade is done on work you take home with you and you produce mm -hmm. to the lecturer and it's graded and handed back to you. And we try and provide you feedback on that when we do that, go through that process. So uh, in-course assessment is quite, quite common. Um, and that's sometimes mixed with an end of semester um, e examination. So you may have, say, 50% of your work is coursework during the year, 
And then when it comes to the end of the year, depending on the subject you're in, you may have a, a sit down examination of two hours uh, okay. you won't have seen. That's always the most challenging thing, I think, for students. But well, students who have been to the, the Leaving Certificate will be well familiar with the process of having to sit down for an exam and, and produce the goods. But it's a mixed bag. It's, not, uh, it's, it's, it's more even than that, I think. And the third one, of course, is oral exams. Now, oral exams are typically used only in languages. Okay. They are also used sometimes in some subjects where we want to get a sense of what students' knowledge base is. So the students are invited to come in and discuss a piece of work. And that's, uh, that's a different way for students um, uh, being assessed. Of course, they're used extensively in, in postgraduate work in the, in the capstone degree in Mary I is, is the doctorate. And if you do a doctorate, uh, you produce your thesis, that's the written work, and then you've got to defend it. And that's the oral exam. So that is a very long and rich tradition in, in, in the university. Yeah, yeah, you know that that's I think they've made, uh, made that very clear. Yeah, so I suppose basically students have a number of different ways that they can pick up marks. It's not just um, solely based on exams or solely based on assignments. There's a lots of different ways that you can uh, pick up marks throughout the semester. Most um, most lecturers will give marks for attendance. So yeah. and they're you know, turning up, uh, particularly in first year, is really important. Uh, but turning up and participation is another mark that you can get, depending on how the, the lecturer structures the course. So it's up to the individual module how that happens. It's not uniform across the entire system. But typically, if you turn up, you get marks. If you participate, you get marks uh, without ever having to do an exam. Yeah, OK. Um, yeah, I suppose something that you mentioned earlier, Michael, we mentioned um, uh, teaching, and we mentioned secondary teaching in particular. Um, I suppose the whole area of accreditation um, obviously, it's with psychology, is accredited by the Psychological Society of Ireland. But for people maybe who are thinking of secondary teaching um, and the different subjects that we have in Mary Immaculate, uh, what are the kind of different options available uh, to them? Uh, secondary teaching in Ireland, of course, is, um, is, is overseen by the Teaching Council. And mm -hmm. they are the registration body with whom any teacher has to be registered. So the teaching council actually lay out a requirement. If you're going to teach English, you must have so many units of English. If you're going to teach geography, you must have done both physical and, and um, uh, uh, urban geography and so on. So in our, all our courses, in our teaching subjects, meet the requirements of the teaching council. So if you come out of Mary I uh, with an arts degree in teaching subjects that are recognized by the teaching council, you will already have met their criteria for content. You won't mm -hmm. have the content. One thing we've been doing in the last few years are for those students from years past before the teaching council came into existence who find that they want to go to teaching and have a, a gap in their a CV. And we're filling in that gap by offering the opportunity to do that module now. Um, mm -hmm. That's the current uh, practice. It won't affect, the, obviously, our school leavers. Uh, yes. interest some of our mature leavers or some of our graduates, the more they hear about that. Yeah, yeah, that's brilliant. And I think that's an important thing maybe for, for students to note as well that all uh, the subjects um, on the programme that you can teach in secondary school, that they are accredited by the Teaching Council of Ireland, you know, if, if that's an area you're thinking of getting into after your, after your degree. Um, I suppose the thing that a lot of parents might often ask to you, Michael, maybe at, uh, at events in the college is uh, what are the career prospects or what are areas of employment could their son or daughter possibly get into after their arts degree? Yeah, you get a lot of people. They're not going to do an arts degree. <laughs> um, the first thing to say, and I say this to the parents whenever I meet them at the parents' night, is that an arts degree is not vocational preparation. Okay. Not specifically geared to train you for a particular... It is about educating you and rounding you out as a person. For example, the typical arts graduate will have three times the vocabulary of somebody who leaves school with a leaving cert and never goes to college. And it's that kind of exposure uh, to knowledge, to understanding knowledge systems, to being able to organize your knowledge in a framework of reference for your life and having a way of figuring out answers no matter what question you're asked, that you at least know where to go and how to articulate a question and how to arrive at a solution is really where the uh, university excels and that's what the degree does it equips people with a mechanism for life uh, and we would say it, it launches them on stage of being a lifelong learner um, yeah. what begins in the college doesn't end the day you get the degree into your hand 
Uh, it's really the start of a process that goes on for the rest of your life. But the skills that you acquire in getting to that day are skills that will stand you in really good stead for the rest of your life. And that's really what an arts degree is about. It's about um, producing that rounded individual. Mm. One way I've characterized this, and it may well be lost in a lot of our, our school leavers, is mm. um, somebody who can take uh, one of the big newspapers in the world, like the Irish Times or the Guardian or the New York Times, and they can read it cover to cover and all the magazines and everything in it. And they can understand everything, no matter what was reported on, and they yeah. can state authoritatively on it. <laughs> yeah. Because they have that broad sense. They're not confined into, I am a physicist and I'm, my information is uh, an inch wide and a mile deep. They have a much okay. broader concept of the world, the way the world works. And they also have very deep knowledge in their subject area. So our degree has both breadth and depth. And it makes for really rounded uh, citizenship. Yeah, I think you described it very well, uh, Michael, is that, that broad skill set that you get from doing a Bachelor of Arts degree uh, and that would stand you in bed then when you go looking for employment uh, later on uh, after, you, after you finish college. Uh, I suppose final question just for the evening, um, maybe for, for students who are going to be starting in uh, late September, uh, what advice would you give to, to a first year student now that's starting the Bachelor of Arts degree? Um. The, the first piece of advice I would give would be go to all your lectures and tutorials. Don't be. Okay, that's kind of important. Um, the second piece of advice is to make friends. And the way Mary I structured, that won't be a problem. The third piece of advice is one that always puzzles parents when I say this. The student that worries me the most is the student who goes from the lecture theatre to the library to the lecture theatre, to the library. <laughs> they usually missed out on the pub or the club in between. Okay, what yeah. I mean by that is that that socialisation experience of making friends, of uh, engaging with others, of articulating your views, of uh, balancing your life between work and study and play is really, really critical. And I regard that as just as important as the, the work mm -hmm. part of it, that you develop a rich social life because that really rounds you out as an individual. And that's what we're about. We're about the creation of flourishing individuals, fully rounded people. And I think that what goes on in, in the pub or the club or when students are socializing or in, in, mm -hmm. out of play of some kind is really just as important for their development as what goes on in the classroom. Now I'd say just as important, not yeah. more important, okay? <laughs> Uh, but that, that, that really is, is important. And I suppose what I'm really getting at there is to, to underline this idea of you've got to look after your health. You've got to eat well, you've got to sleep well, all of those things. But you've also got to watch your mental health. And I make this appeal to students every year, to the first years, that if you see somebody around you who's difficult, who isn't, uh, that, who, not coping, for whom life is really difficult, tell us. And we will make an intervention to support that student. Uh, some years so we had a student who fell into ill health and wasn't able to come on campus. And for that final semester, uh, members of two departments went down to that student's home every week with all the materials to sort make sure the student didn't lose out. And that student qualified with the rest of their class. Yeah, yeah. That's and I think that's, that's what I suppose a lot of my passion about Mary I comes. It's from the quality of the faculty. There are people there who are world leaders in their subjects. They create they're really, really good academics, but they are also passionate about their students and they're passionate about imparting knowledge. And it's, it's, uh, it's great to be in the position to be, able to be so proud of that. Uh, and I think what we offer is just beyond compare. Yeah, no, I, I think that, that is very true uh, what, what you've said, Michael. Um, I suppose with the time uh, has caught up with us. Um, I'd just like to thank you thank you again for, for taking the time to join us this evening. I think you've given a very um, uh, detailed um, I suppose, insight into at what the Bachelor of Arts degree at Mary Mecca College is all about. So uh, thanks again to Professor Michael Breen. For anyone that is interested in joining us next Tuesday, it'll be the final session in our series. Um, it will be next Tuesday, the 30th of June at 7pm. I'll be in conversation with Dr. Claire Griffin 
and we'll be looking at the primary two introductions in Mary Immaculate College, everything from the Bachelor of Education to the new Bachelor of Education International, as well as the BN in Education and Psychology. So if you're interested in those areas, uh, please do join us next Tuesday, the 30th at 7 p.m. But uh, once again, I'd just like to thank Michael uh, for taking the time out this evening, and I hope all of you will join us again next week. So uh, thanks very much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your evening. Thanks very much, Michael. Good night. God bless. Bye-bye.